Hey there, City Hills Church. I want to take a moment to share with you some details as far as our in-person gatherings and the coronavirus. But I'd also challenge you, hang with me for a couple minutes after because I just want to share something from my heart with you as well. We have made the tough decision that from now until January 3rd, we will be online only, that we'll be canceling our in-person gatherings. And as difficult and as frustrating and as, as much of a gut punch as that decision has been for us, we, we feel like it's in the best interest of your family, in the best interest of our community. And as much as personally, I want to fight the system as much as, as I want to be a, a, a revolutionary and, and a pirate and say, no, either, these are our rights and this is what we, we uh, have the right to do. You guys have known from the beginning that our hearts, our minds, our focus and our mission is to reach people who are far from God. And that tension between the rights of the church and the impact on our community is a real, it's a real deal. And honestly, just so you know, we're a part of a movement that is, is fighting for the rights of the church. We're a part of the Pacific Justice Institute that is in court fighting for the rights of churches right here in California and on the West Coast. So we're, we're not idly standing by just going, okay, we're gonna just do whatever anyone says. But out of respect for the leaders in our community and out of respect, honestly, for how the numbers are tripling and quadrupling in some of the areas of our city, we feel like the, the wisest thing to do in light of our past circumstances, our present circumstances, and our future hopes, that the wise thing to do is to cancel our in-person gatherings because we can't really figure out how we can communicate to our community, hey, you matter to us and you matter to God, but we're gonna break the rules in order so we can do what we feel like we wanna do. And, and we have lots of friends who feel the opposite and they're fighting the system and they're fighting the good fight and they're doing that. And we totally support them. We totally understand that. But for us and for our church, we feel like the wisest thing to do is to cancel our in-person gatherings through January 3rd. And that's hard. Guys, we, we have lost sleep. We have had fights and conversations and debates and and looked at every detail of this situation and we just feel like at the end of the day what we're at peace with that the lord has given us peace with is that we're we're, we're going to make this decision as hard as that is but with that said we have some really exciting things that we feel like you're going to love to be a part of online starting this sunday as we kick off our family tree series I got an opportunity to sit down with some family who came in from New Orleans to be with us. And they came because obviously it was our first Thanksgiving since the passing of my dad. And, and so it was incredible to have them here with us. But we got to do this really cool interview where I got to ask them about what our family looked like before Jesus. And then the, the impact that it had and how our legacy completely changed from there. It's such a sweet and awesome interview. I, I can't wait for you guys to see that this Sunday as that airs with our with our message as well. On the 13th, we'll do some worship together online and continue our family tree series. But the really, really fun thing that I want you to kind of put on your calendar and make sure that you're a part of is you guys know that our kids have been working on a, a kids program and that's not going to go away. What we want to do is we want to record that kids program for you in some safe ways and air that on December 20th for our official Christmas service. And so the parents should be on the lookout for an email where you can sign up for some time slots to have your kids come in and they'll, they'll say their lines and they'll do their dance moves and we'll put the whole video together. And what we're excited about with that is that it's an opportunity for our community to have something that is just fun and life-giving and encouraging and Christmassy, right? But it also lets your family who are all over the nation be able to see it and, and be a part of it as well. And so that will air on December the 20th, and we're really excited about that. Again, parents, be on the lookout for more information about that. Because what you might not know as a church is that our kids have been practicing every Saturday on Zoom to like really work hard on this. And we've got costumes, we've got the whole deal. It's going to be awesome. So as hard as the decision has been, 
We know that December is going to be a really fun month and a really cool opportunity for us to connect with all of you online. Listen, I told you I wanted to share my heart with you. And so details aside, guys, this season has been, it's been brutal. We talk about decision fatigue. We talk about leadership fatigue. We talk about all of these things. I think we can just be real with each other. We're just fatigued. Just the, the mental fatigue and, and decisions and, and all of these things, man, this season has, it, it just wears you down. It just wears you down. You just feel like you're holding the weight of the world. And I feel like what the Lord really challenged me with is that in this season, while I'm trying to get all of the things right and we're trying to make the right decisions and we're trying to, to, to do the right things, he challenged me that sometimes I'm not going to their source, that I'm trying to do it on my own. And so what he challenged me to do, and, and I want to challenge you to partner with me in this, is that every single day for the month of December, for all 31 days in December, I want us to pray together for five minutes in the morning. We're not going to do it online. We're just going to do this, this together. We make this commitment to each other. And there's two things that I want us to pray for. I want us to pray that God will show you your unique purpose today. And then the second thing is that God would open the door for you to make an impact on somebody's life today. So many times we're trying to change these big sweeping things. And I think we miss the, the power of going to the source of our strength and the source of our purpose every single day. To start our day, I, I know our girls wake up at the crack of dawn to wake up and in, instead of grabbing the phone and seeing what emails I have, and instead of grabbing my phone and seeing what information I need to consume as I go into my day and looking at the calendar, or maybe for you hopping on social media, instead of that, that I'm gonna make the commitment that for five minutes, as soon as I open my eyes, I'm gonna pray the prayer, God, show me my purpose today. And God, give me an opportunity to impact somebody's life today. You see, I think what the enemy is doing in this season is he's distracting us with the fact that nothing feels normal. But what Jesus is trying to communicate to us is you don't need normal to live out your purpose. You don't need normal to be able to make an impact on somebody's life. You don't need access to an in-person service in order for you to be able to find the healing and the hope that you need. What you need is him. And as much as I love being here in person, I'm not the greatest speaker in the world that's gonna change your life. The message that changes your life, that gives you hope, that inspires you, that helps you step into your purpose, that message is from Jesus. And so I'd encourage you, as God encouraged me, hey, don't let another day go by where you're trying to lean on your own strength to accomplish this. Don't let another day go by that you miss out on your purpose because you're trying to solve the huge, big things that are happening. Start with now. Start with today. Start with the moment I wake up. I'm, working, I'm waking up with purpose in my heart and a focus of intentionality in my mind. And I believe that God will help us as we close out this year that honestly for our family has been the hardest year of our entire life. I believe God will redeem the end of this year and help us be so much closer to him than we've ever been before. That as we step into 2021, it's not that our problems go away. It's not that the coronavirus goes away. It's not that the political stuff goes away. But what does not change is that our relationship with Jesus is stronger than it was when we started this year. Take this challenge with me. Will you do that? Will you wake up every day and pray for purpose and pray for influence? I believe that as you do that, God's gonna do incredible, incredible things in your life. He's created you to be the pastors in your home. He's created you to be the pastors in your community, to be the pastors in your neighborhood, to be the pastors in your workplaces. He's created you with the purpose and the ability and the influence to change people's life. Susan just said it last week, with the word of your testimony, with your story of what God is doing in your life. Don't let another day go by that you're trying to do it in your own strength. Guys, listen, 
I can't thank you enough for your love and support. When we think about it, it brings us to tears, how you guys have been so incredible through this journey, through this year. And we believe that greater things are still in store. Let's get stronger together. Let's lean on one another, but let's lean on our savior like we've never leaned on him before. And I believe as we do that, it will change everything. Guys, I love you, we love you, and we will find as many ways as possible to spend time with you before this year is done.